The biggest mistake runners make with strength training, and if you want to run a half or full marathon, do not make these mistakes. Number one, not doing it. The absolute biggest mistake you can make with strength training is not doing it. So many runners don't do any strength training at all. All they do is run, and the biggest problem with that is that they won't have the physical strength required to run half or full marathons. They'll be in cardiovascular shape, but they won't have the physical strength to finish their race. You'll see, let's use the marathon for our example, around mile 20, mile 22, they'll be tired, they'll be sore, they'll be cramping up, their time will start to fall off a cliff, and in some cases they may even have to walk and they'll have to walk across the finish line like a zombie from The Walking Dead. And the reason that is is because they didn't have the physical strength to do it. And so the biggest mistake you can make is by not strength training. Make sure that you are strength training and we'll talk about what exercises to do, how many times per week here in a sec, but the absolute biggest mistake you can make is by not doing any strength training at all. Number two, not enough volume. Now, the second biggest thing is not doing enough volume of strength training. The goal with strength training is to get stronger. And the way to get stronger you have to do enough volume. Now this could be number of reps, number of sets, amount of weight, or the amount of times you lift per week. But the goal is to get stronger and it requires enough volume. If you're only lifting once a week or you lift every couple of weeks or you're just inconsistent, you'll never get stronger. It's, not, it's just not gonna work out. You have to consistently be in the gym lifting weights and doing enough volume to get stronger. And what I recommend in terms of volume is that you strength train three times per week. Now, a split that I like to use is a push-pull leg split. Push is your chest, your shoulders, and your triceps. Pull is back and biceps. Legs is your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, and the calves. And so the way I break it down, the way I use my training and the way that my clients train is on push is on Mondays, right? That's chest, shoulders, and triceps. Legs is on Wednesdays, which is your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, and your calves. And then your pull is your Friday, which is your back and your biceps. Now, the reason this works so well is because the issue most runners experience with strength training, and I've heard this dozens of times, is they try to do a leg day the day before a long run. That will never work. If you your long run's on Saturday and then you try doing a leg day on Friday, you're gonna be so sore and it's gonna hinder your run where you're gonna get discouraged because one, the run is not gonna feel good at all because every step's gonna hurt, but two, your time is just not gonna be as good because you won't be able to allocate and dedicate enough energy on your run to do well. And so what happens is you'll look at your, your performance, you'll look at your energy, you'll look at the run itself, and you'll be like, the reason I did bad is because I was strength training, but the, the actual reason was just because of the way you structured it. So a little nugget for you is that if you're gonna do a long run on Saturday, place your, specifically your leg day during the middle of the week, like on, on a Wednesday. That's the best way to go about that. So the two biggest mistakes, number one, not doing it. The second biggest mistake is not doing enough volume. Now, third biggest mistake. Wrong exercises. Uh, the third biggest mistake is doing the wrong exercises. Like I said, some is better than none, but there are better exercises than others. The goal is to be as efficient as possible with your training. Most of us are very busy and we all only have 24 hours in the day. And so you have to be efficient, right? If you have a full-time job, you got family, you got kids, in and out of soccer practice or ballet or basketball practice, you have to be efficient. And you can get a, a absolutely amazing lift in 45 minutes to an hour but it's only possible if you are very efficient. If you try doing a bunch of air squats and burpees and you're lollygagging and you're doing five pound exercises and you're, you're just wasting time, 
you're one, going to be extremely inefficient, but two, you're just not going to get the results. You're probably going to get discouraged and you're going to quit. So the thing is you have to be efficient. What does efficient look like when it comes to lifting weights? It's doing the right exercises that move the needle the most. And like I said, the goal with strength training is to get stronger. So the exercises that move the needle the most are compound lifts. Now, what are compound lifts? Compound lifts are exercises that when you do that exercise, it requires you to use multiple muscle groups. So when you squat, you have to use your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, and your calves. That is a compound lift. An isolation lift is bicep curls. It only trains your biceps. And so if you wanna be as efficient as possible so you can get stronger, you have to focus on doing compound lifts. Now, what are all the compound lifts that I do and my clients do? Like I said, on Monday, is a push day, which is chest, shoulders, and triceps. Some of the compound lifts we'll do is bench press and shoulder press. Now the bench press, you can do it with dumbbells or you can do it with barbells. I prefer dumbbells uh, just be, for, just, I, I, I mean, I personally do a combination of both, but dumbbells, I think it is better. Um, it's a bit safer and it's a lot easier to perfect the form, um, especially if you want to go a bit heavier. So. Stick to the dumbbells, and also if you have muscle imbalances, it helps to really even out the muscle imbalances with dumbbells compared to a barbell, but that's kind of beside the point. The point is you want to do compound lifts. So bench press, shoulder presses, Arnold presses, um, you could do close grip bench press with your triceps. Those are all compound lifts that will train your chest, your shoulders, and your triceps. Now for legs, this is the most important one by far, so don't screw this up. The most important exercises, squats, leg press, dumbbell cannonball squats or goblet squat, squat, interchangeable name, walking lunges. Those are by far the four best compound ec lift exercises when training legs. And deadlifts, deadlifts are, that's, that's a back exercise by the way. That, that's for your back, not really your legs. Um, so those are the best ones for Wednesday when you do legs. And then Friday, you know, you can do your, your deadlifts, 100% do your deadlifts, um, and then your, your rows, which would be barbell rows or dumbbell rows, both very good. Um, training your traps, traps are important for running, especially when you gotta keep your arms up like here. Uh, so your traps, and then any type of, really just any type of row. Uh, those are gonna be the best. You can do lat pull downs too, which is another great exercise. But the, the point is you wanna focus on exercises that train multiple muscle groups at a time. So just doing a quick recap, the three biggest mistakes is number one, not doing it. Number two, not doing enough of it. And number three, being inefficient and doing the wrong exercises. Like and subscribe.